Hey guys, I just got my new furnace from Lithuania. It's a Devil Forge FB2N, I think. And I'm gonna be unboxing it and comparing it to my old furnace. So right off the bat, this thing is enormous compared to the FB1SB furnace. The FB1SB furnace right here, the max crucible size is a four kilogram. Or actually it's five kilogram, but the four kilogram is the best one for it. Um, and for the FB2MB, the max crucible size is a 10 kilogram. That's a huge difference. And it's enough to fit the four kilogram inside of it with room to spare. That's why they pulled it out. This thing's huge. So along with the FB2MB, it comes with a giant burner. Um, you got instructions on how to use it and how to put it together. More styrofoam. You got I think six feet of cord for propane. You got your regulator. A little different. Um, oh, you got your rigidizer. Some of that. And the rigidizer just helps it keep the cable intact and away from, you know, uh, shrinking. You got some extra cable to put around the burner. I don't know what this is. It's kind of a mess. A lot of bubble wrap. Uh, so this should be the fire brick that goes in the middle to keep the crucible standing up and away from the cable. This stuff tends to break though, so. Um, you got a brush to put the rigidizer on, and that's it. So it seems this thing gets it up to about the same temperature as the FB1SB. It's around 2,600, but this thing can hold a lot more of whatever metal you're melting. So here's the nozzle for the Regulators. All these parts will be for pain. Okay, I see how this goes. All right, so this will be the knob to spin to actually like use as a regulator. That's what was different. Last time when I ordered one of these things, it came with this already in place. So I'm gonna screw that all the way in for right now. But eventually, screwing all the way in means that no air comes through. And this is about that. My video cut out. And um. I was just about to talk about the burner, so this is your air choke, so you want to start with it closed, light it up, and then the propane gets flowing, and then let some air in, and it'll sound like a jet engine once it's right. So, on to building it, and the instructions I'll be posting in the description, back or front to back, so... If you guys lose it, um, you can just print it back off or just look at it. We need see you guys. a crescent wrench or just a wrench that fits the bolts and a small flathead screwdriver. Just want to stick that in there and I guess this one doesn't have it. So on the FB1SB, it had a little indention on the side of this for the burner to slide in which didn't really make sense to me, but it was there. So I'm just gonna get this in and slide it so that it goes the opposite way of the burner. Next is connect the hose to the pressure regulator and the burner. So move this screwdriver and we'll use it right now. But 
think. Oh, okay. So yeah, just stick this all the way in. You want to slide? Hold it. So once that's in, you're gonna push this almost all the way up and tighten it. I'm just gonna push it all the way in and completely tighten it, leaving no room for gas to escape. So that is not a good problem to have. Okay, now we're back into this. And I can't figure out like I said, I'm not anywhere near being good with propane. So I can't figure out whether this goes in like that or like that. Just cheat and look at this one. This doesn't seem like it's going to go out. And a big bulge right here, and not much of one down here. So I'm assuming it's gonna assume, but I think it goes in this way. Oh, I'll check. Give me a minute. Let that slide and push it. I'm kind of twisted back and forth, trying to push it in. So you're going to want to put in the burn and make sure that it's flush with the cable. Once it's flush, so then tighten it in. Actually, no. I'm going to grab your extra cable that you have. So that when the fire comes around, it doesn't actually like come back in. And here's where you can use your screwdriver to get that and peel away a little bit of the stuff and just put it around there. So you don't really need all of it. Make sure it's flush again and then set that in there. Go the other strip. This is not what I meant to. And keep making sure that the edge of the burner is flush with the wall of cable inside of the thing. Right, so once you're done with that, go ahead and screw your bolts in. My hand first. Make sure you count your rotations. Make sure that you have an equal on each side. It's not pointing in any direction. And once it's tight enough, you can give it a last rotation with a wrench. Just to make sure that's so what comes with the forge is a two and a half inch brush and the good part about this is one it's used for applying the rigidizer but once you're done with that my bad sorry about that <laughs> once you're done applying the rigidizer you can use it later on to help with your molds if you're using green sand you can 
brush on some talc powder or parting powder. Just help yourself out. Reuse. And this one is the FB2 MB. Uh, this one, it's really, it gets really hot really fast if you use the right propane and the right amount of propane. And um, I've been using this one for about a year and a half now. And it really hasn't given me too much problems, except for if you leave it out, it's gonna rust, obviously. It's made of steel. So I had to repaint it. Um, these bolts rusted pretty easily and um, they're actually sitting outside with some sulfuric acid de-rusting right now. Um, these fire bricks, they broke a long time ago and um, uh, it's been pretty good to me. This furnace cost about, uh, I think it was like 230. It wasn't that bad. Especially for a starter. Yeah, 230 is pretty good for what you get out of this. This can fill a lot of molds. Um, now I imagine that this crucible is going to be a lot harder to pick up, especially I'm using log grabbers to um, pick up my crucible, which is really good for this one. This one, I tried and it bent the log grabbers. So I'm gonna have to grab it from one side and pick it up. But it was really snug fit, so maybe I'll get a smaller crucible for right now. Um, this one can fit about three of my three kilogram ingots. And this one, I already looked into it, it's like 12 of my three kilogram ingots. Basically just the bigger version of this. Now, if you want a refractory one, the FP2N, uh, that one is going to last a lot longer. Like, as you can see on this one, this stuff's kind of falling out. And um, around here, shrunk a lot. So with refractory, you're not going to have that problem. I just want to point out the fact that um, both of those furnaces that I showed you today can get up to the point where they melt cast iron and they can melt copper pretty easy. So Here this thing just a little bit faster. I added two lights and a fan blowing directly down into it. We did this last time and it seemed to work pretty well. So just doing it again. I hope I could answer all your questions about the FB2MB furnace. You should click up here to watch me fire it up for the first time down here for my latest video and right here to subscribe.